Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is EJ. Uh, I'd like to um, represent Industrial Technology Research Institute, or so known as ETRI. Uh, ETRI is a nonprofit organization that working as a bridge between uh, Taiwan government, industrial, as well as, uh, uh, as, well as uh, academia. That the way that we work is that we take government funding, about 50% of them, and then we work on interesting project and then transfer into prototype or technology that, that can transfer into the vendors or industrial uh, uh, companies. So uh, right here that we have our, our own uh, distribution uh, that we are going to work with the uh, Taiwan government so we can push the OpenStack inside uh, in the uh, Taiwan area as well as uh, the Asia area. So uh, I would like to roll a short uh, video so to show you uh, regarding uh, just a simple introduction for our, uh, for our distribution. Get this thing out. Nowadays, lots of internet services are provided via cloud. But cloud systems can be costly, complex to set up, and difficult to manage, often providing an incomplete solution that requires heavy hardware, software resources, and manpower. Now there is a better way to build hassle-free OpenStack cloud systems. ITRI OpenStack Distribution. This is IOD, a fully integrated, easy to manage, one-stop solution that saves time and cost, augmenting OpenStack with powerful functionality. IOD is a dynamic OpenStack enabler for carrier-grade deployments. It is made up of Disco, Peregrine, and PDCM. Disco is a high-performance distributed block storage solution for Cinder that offers higher performance than Ceph, integrating different storage and backup solution. Intelligent data deduplication reduces storage requirements by eliminating redundant data. Additionally, Disco offers HA, self-healing, N-way replication, fast volume clone, and data center to data center backup. Peregrine is our optimized networking plugin for Neutron. Fast failover pre-calculates backup path and immediately deploys it when a link is down. Traffic engineering dynamically calculates the packet transmission path and balances the traffic load on each physical link. Diagnostic UI provides physical, virtual topology and traffic load, VM traffic load, and traffic analysis. Commodity Ethernet Switch uses OVS and Ethernet Switch to provide SDN features, making it cost efficient. Peregrine is L2 fabric architecture and able to achieve optimal load balance of all the physical networks by dynamically calculating the packet transmission path. Peregrine is able to redeploy packet transmission path when any of the links or devices have failed by applying centralization control architecture in fast failover. Peregrine as a hybrid SDN solution supports commodity ethernet switch and virtual open flow switch. PDCM stands for Physical Data Center Management. It is our hardware device monitoring and service management system. Via a user-friendly interface, it provides continuous diagnostic monitoring of the entire system, performing requested commands easily and providing built-in event management. How to save even more time and money? Bampi is a time provisioning software to save time and cost offering deployment automation, time and labor savings, and ease of use. Without Bampi, auto-deployment from bare metal takes one person up to a full 288 hours. Incredibly, the same task with Bampi takes only 1.5 hours per person. All IOD ensures high availability. IOD is a better OpenStack distribution. 
offering a true one-stop, cost-effective, powerful and easy-to-use solution. Okay. I guess we don't have much time to... Uh Where is the mouse? Okay. Sorry about the technical difficulty. We are trying to get the video out for this video. So I'm going to, uh, because uh, we have a next speaker that also have 20 minutes, so I only have like uh, seven minutes left. So I have to uh, skim through some of the, the things. Maybe uh, uh, make it really quick. So what is eTree OpenStack? Here you can see that most of the core of the OpenStack are still there. But what we doing is that we uh, offer this uh, disco block device through the Cinder plugin and a Peregrine controller that add, add in our SDN software defined networking through the Neutron plugin and also the PDCA for monitoring. And all, overall, we also do the HA uh, for um, uh, every component inside OpenStack, as well as for our Disco and Peregrine. So I don't think I have much point to, uh, uh, we don't, probably don't have time to cover all those. Uh, what is missing in OpenStack? We, know, we all know that OpenStack is great. It is developing very fast, but why it is still missing something? In the, in the early day, the deployment is a hassle. Just to deployment all in one take you a lot of time, and it's, it's a daunting job. But nowadays, the deployment becomes easier because a lot of companies, they have their own installation, GUI, so that problem will go away. Uh, I think it's going away right now, but the, the problem is that for operations to your uh, a pain, because the instance doesn't run itself. You still need people to run your instance. So that's why OpenStack Foundation, they have this certified uh, OpenStack administrator. So our, our job here is, is that we not only provide uh, the system itself, we also uh, provide operation uh, utility required to operate the, the, the cloud. So I'm going to just to jump through a little bit and show you the architecture, the, the OpenStack stack that we have here. So most of the uh, components are the same, so except that the, in this portion we have our storage through the cinder and the lower, the lower portion that we have our uh, SDN solution, Peregrine, that control the Ethernet switch uh, this controller is able to use SNMP to control the Ethernet switch or as well as uh, the OVS switch. So I will talk about it if I have time. And then we have this PDCM for the monitoring. So I just have to uh, quickly go through the, um, some of the components. This is the disco, the distribute integrated stor storage and comprehension for, with comprehension data protection. And this is the architecture. We have the Compuno that has the DMS client that talk to, that provide the VM, uh, the volumes to the VM, and they talk to the name node that is the metadata repository, and also all the payload requests is extended to the data nodes. So what is the characteristics that we provide for our disco solution? First, we have thin provisioning, we have HA support, and it has transparent data protection and fast file cloning. I would like to highlight the fast file cloning. Uh, in OpenStack, usually when you start a VN instance, you have to copy it over to a local storage or start it right there from the volume. But if you want to start a uh, VN with like 100 gig of uh, uh, the system volume, you may have a hard time just to copy that things over your computer or to start a new instance. So we have this fast, fast clo uh, volume cloning that you can, and can uh, copy and write a, a new volume in, in a couple of seconds. So you can start your 
on uh, 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 new instance really fast. Uh, I will going to just skim through. This is just a, a feature in Disco that provide a remote backup solution. Uh, the dupe. So this is also very important because in a cloud, uh, in a cloud, uh, we have a lot of image that's ac actually duplicated. Uh, a lot of Windows and probably Linux image that's all duplicate. And also, for example, if you run an email system, your attachment may just send to a lot of bar, uh, everybody, and all those attachments are duplicate. So our deep deep system can take all those duplicate uh, uh, blocks and then just point it to uh, uh, point point it to the, the unique one. So that can save you space for more important data. So I, I don't think I have time to uh, go through the diagnostic UI, but I'll just show you a point that's that this uh, UI is quite uh, sophisticated. That you can, when you have uh, experienced any problem, you can see that there's an IOPS screen that shows you the current performance. If you experience any problem, you can just go through UI, look through uh, the problem, for example, which VN use which volume and which data node and which down, and in the down you may look at the ray status, and maybe there are some disk that re got replaced, and now it's building, so you, the performance is suffering, so all those you can get it from our uh, UI. Uh, so far is our off um, solution that is actually built on top of our commodity hardware and as you can see that in the front we have these 24 SSDs. So in total we can do 1 million random 4, 4K IOPS through the network. So it is quite, uh, the performance is, is quite good and we are actually provide a lot of very uh, good features in this product and uh, if you want to have a good performance in some of the database, you, you can consider use this product. And we also are trying to uh, uh, integrate the disco with SOFA uh, is a work in progress. The global wearing, uh, wear leveling is a very important feature because over time, the, the flash disk got wear in different levels. So it could be very different. Like in this case, uh, over time it become uh, some of these wear a lot and some, some of these just wear little. So in, eventually, one of these got corrupted and, or used up, then the whole system render is useless. So the, this, this one is very important feature. So you can get our, uh, your system uh, running longer. Next, I would like to uh, introduce you about this uh, SDN solution from, uh, as we call it, Peregrine. So we are a major member for the open data, uh, uh, open data that's uh, open source. Uh, and we contribute our code called SNMP for SDN. The good thing about this one is that you can use the SNMP to configure the traditional uh, commodity Ethernet switch. So you can just use it just like an, another over OVS switch. So what you, what you can do is that you can set up flow through the SNMP. And this, so your controller doesn't care about it's a traditional or OVS, so you can save money. And also, uh, you, your performance is quite good. It's just up to par with the, the regular, regular switch. So there are some great features inside the Peregrine. For example, you can just use commodity Ethernet switch, which is much cheaper than OBS switch. And we have fast failover, so we pre-calculate the failover path. So when there is a link down, a switch down, you will fail over to the pre-calculated path within one second, and you will calculate the next one. So your network is, is got protected and traffic engineering that can load balancing the traffic load on each physical link, and we have diagnostic UI, which is quite good. I may show you some uh, snapshot later. So this is talking about the failover. 
So if there is a link down, you will fail over to a new configuration. And for traditional switch, it just send SNMP through the component in the open data and then reconfig the switch. So the managed UI here is, um, as you can see, that you can see the topology as usual. Uh, and then for each link, you can see what is the VDAN running inside this link. And for each VDAN, you can see what is the VM pair in OpenStack that running through this VNet. Usually, a VNet is, is one network inside a tenant. OK? For each, and then for each VM link, you can see what's the, what's the communication inside. For example, is it running UDP, airport port, or TCP? So you can use it to diagnose what is the problem for some kind of uh, network problem or construction. PDCM is our monitoring tool. So it actually have great features and is missing currently inside the default OpenStack. So what it can do, it can do a lot of things. I, I, because that's high, I won't go over them here. Uh, the GUI is, looks something like this. You can look at uh, a lot of things. For example, uh, the CPU, the, the fans, and the temperatures. So I am going to move to the uh, uh, next subtopic uh, re regarding this red scale architecture. So. In today's architecture, that uh, I probably used to uh, hear about Intel's red scale architecture. They are using a different technology. They, they use uh, uh, 10G or 40G Ethernet to connect their uh, servers in the rack. But here, we are using PC, PCI Express instead of the Ethernet. So the good thing about Ethernet is that um, it's cheaper, cost much less, and also it's quite fast. The, I impress that usually, the, right now the, the mainstream of Ethernet is like 10G, uh, probably uh, go up to 40G, but it's very easy to do 64G inside the PCI. So I think it's a quite good alternative to, uh, for doing the, the f fast and cheap uh, networking in the, in, in, a, in a rack. So from here, that we, we have a lot of uh, tra uh, the traditional hosts that we have, each host have its own CPU, memory, and disk. But in the PCI-based uh, rescue architecture, we disaggregate the rack into a CPU pool, DRAM pool, disk pool, and NIC pools. And then we can create uh, dynamically the, the, the so-called software-defined server. That server can compose, uh, uh, compose in different configurations. For example, you can uh, make this server is suitable for the CPU-intensive or memory-intensive or network-intensive workload. And the other thing is that because of this architecture, we can make the server uh, easily configured and also very high density. So this is one of the prototypes that we do. Uh, uh, basically here is that we have this NTP uh, to, to mapping uh, the virtual function of a physical function. Uh, in, in this case, we have Ethernet that has two virtual functions, and we have the, the managed host to mapping it to uh, uh, one of the VF1 to uh, the left-hand side to uh, one of the hosts, and uh, v, uh, the other virtual function to, uh, to the other host. So both of these hosts get one Ethernet device. Actually, it's not reside in his box. It's actually reside under there, the SIOV device that provide the actual device, but we're mapping it dynamically into other hosts. So that's the idea. 
and we are going to work with the Taiwan industry vendors, hardware vendors to push this architecture uh, for the next generation of data centers. So I guess I only have three minutes left. So I would like to conclude this portion of the talk. Is anybody have any question? If no, then I will invite uh, next speaker, Dr. Xiao. Thank you. Uh, good day, everyone. Welcome to the to this session. Uh, my name is uh, Maurice Zhao. I'm the deputy uh, director general of Data Institute, which is uh, a part of Institute for Information Industry in uh, Taiwan uh, Republic of China. Uh, in this section, I'm going to share with you our work in building a big data analytic platform and its application and uh, the platform itself use uh, several of the open stack uh, technology uh, to provide cloud-based uh, service, uh, which I will describe uh, more detail later. Uh, the, the funding for this work uh, is supported by Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, in Taiwan, uh, ROC. Uh, the world is moving from energy economy to data economy, and is also gradually moving to the knowledge economy. And there's one thing in common between energy economy and data economy. Uh, in both economy, the, the value add coming from not just getting the, the raw material, it needs to do a lot of, you, you can call it a processing, refining, or whatever, and apply it to get the value out of the raw material. Uh, and the more you refine it, the more, the higher value it gets. Uh, and there's one big difference. In energy economy, the resource is limited. Oil, it gets depleted sooner or later. However, data, you get more value out of it, it will more data get generated and it will explore. You will never exhaust the, the, the data. And the uh, explosion of data generated is commonly termed as a big data challenge, uh, which actually is first uh, coined by a Gartner Research, and is commonly used by the industry or academy uh, today. Uh, what it exactly is big data? Uh, there are four properties uh, commonly used to describe big data. Uh, due to the, the, the time uh, concern, I probably I won't go through this chart. I believe many of you probably know uh, this already. Uh, the big data, there's a challenge. Challenge normally means for engineer or technology like me, I say I would like to solve it. For business executive, they say, oh, this is a big business opportunity. There's much opportunity I want to get. Uh, so in, in our organization, we say, okay, here's a challenge. There's a market opportunity what we like to do. Uh, and that's why we are building, or we have built a, a big data analytic platform, which we call uh, a BISO. And the BISO has two layer. Oh, this, oh yeah. So at the bottom layer is a processing engine. Essentially, we get uh, many of the open source component, including uh, Hadoop, Spark, and, and other things, and integrate together and put the, the, the processing engine. And we also add a few of the utilities to make it easier to install, easier to, to monitor or manage. And on top of that, see, a system is useful only if you have data. And in big data area, you need to go through getting the, from the data source and then doing data orchestration, data curation, data processing, data management, and then analyze it to get insight. And when you have insight, you can apply in different industrial sector, okay? Uh, so this is from the 
uh, open source mostly. This is, is homegrown. Uh, we are building the technology or to uh, extract the data, to enrich the information, to build relation among the data set and create metadata, and also to provide security governance and then have a, a good interface for user API for, for the data scientists to be able to browse, search, or use the data. And so this is the, 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 the architecture. And so this can be used by any company or school to set up and run it. And one problem in Taiwan is many of organizations are small and medium company or organization doesn't have a, a sort of large IT step organization. For them to run this or to maintain this is a big problem. And that's why we also came up with a different version or multiple uh, expanded version, which we use many of the uh, open stack technology to provide the big data analytic service, which means uh, it's a cloud-based uh, big data analytic service. So this is architecture. So this part and this part are the one in the previous chart. And in the processing engine, we develop or, or, or implement five new components, uh, including identity management, cluster management, repository, object store, and monitoring management. And those components interact with the technology from the open stack uh, and through the RESTful API. And then the original processing engine will use this as the uh, interface to interact or use whatever function provided by the open stack. And similarly, uh, we have a piece of service, uh, service client, which essentially is to do the uh, provisioning, cluster management, and, and configuration uh, function. Uh, uh, do, those are also in the act through this uh, to get the function or to use the, the open stack. Okay. Uh, and this is an example just to show how the uh, Pistol service uh, addition work in, uh, in in application, and this example show uh, we are implement a recommendation system. Uh, so, in the configuration stage, you need to create an account uh, to allocate a resource, and also to uh, decide what uh, where to store the the result, and in. For the data scientist or data engineer, during the analytic or application stage, then it needs to, do, to specify the, the data, data report, repository and then to develop the logic to get the data, process data, and analyze the data, and also specify the output. And when this is done, the output of the anal analyzer result will be stored in an intermediate stage, and it can be used uh, later on by uh, the uh, business person or, or data scientist. And this is just to describe what of the open state component is used in each of the stage, including Keystone, Heat, Nova, and Swift. Okay. So the, intermediate, the, the analyzer result will be stored in a recommendation knowledge base, which will be used repeatedly, depends on uh, the, the application scenario. In this case, it's recommendation. So when you want to recommend certain product or certain thing to customer or to uh, whoever, then it will uh, search or retrieve from this knowledge base and, 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 and use it, okay? Uh, so in the remaining part of this section, I will give you uh, some use case or success story of uh, application or company using the BISO system in Taiwan. Uh, one is in smart commerce, uh, the other one is in smart uh, manufacture. Okay, the, the smart commerce is the one uh, we work with the body shop. Uh, body shop is a, a United Kingdom company uh, which has uh, more than 2,000 stores in over four, five, uh, 50 countries. 50 country. uh, in Taiwan, uh, the body shop has more than 400,000 members and it has a very comprehensive uh, member system keeping track of the, the member information. And the body shop wants to essentially find a way to improve the membership service and also to increase their revenue and profit. And so what they want is to have a personalized recommendation system. 
and uh, through uh, the collaboration, working with them, uh, we uh, decided on two uh, solutions for them. One is a personalized uh, recommendation, the other one is uh, asso associative uh, analytic. And this one, I think in many uh, e-commerce sites, Amazon or, or Netflix already or also have, have done that, essentially is try to, uh, based on the person profiling or, or property, uh, to recommend uh, other things. And this is it's kind of combination of if a customer buy certain things, what else maybe he or she will buy at, at the same time. Okay. And to uh, develop these two solutions or to solve this problem, you need to go through uh, 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 several stages like, like this. And technically, uh, in each of stage, we apply several or develop several technology, including identity matching, data cleansing, uh, feature extraction, and in the analytic stage, uh, including the, the custom clustering, uh, collaborative filtering, and content-based recommendation. And for this, uh, we, we, we can develop the frequent uh, pattern mining and high utility pattern mining. Uh, and after this stage, the, the, the result will be uh, generated and it can be used by the, uh, in, in body shop case, they are used in the, the physical store during checkout. And what that, what, how it works is, after you check out, oh, then the screen will show up, say, what item get bought by the current customer. And immediately the system can try to match and do a recommendation on the screen and the clerk will talk to the customer, hey, here is a special deal for you. Will you be interested to buy this one or buying other things? And uh, it turned out to be very effective. And of course, this can be used kind of in online shopping as well. Uh, during the two months uh, trial period after we developed the solution, uh, using both the personalized recommendation as well as the uh, the associative uh, 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 analytic, the, we found out the, the recommendation uh, in, in people called click through actually is 10.1% of the recommendation get activated, means get the transaction. And compared to other stores which are not doing this experiment, I mean, uh, the body shop has many stores, we only select a few to do this experiment and it showed that in two months, the, the income for those stores using this solution increased by 6.8%, which is really good. Um, and even a single digit, but the thing is, is, is good. Okay. Uh, the second use case example is uh, in smart manufacture. So you probably heard the, the term uh, industrial or industrial 4.0 or productivity 4.0. In either case, I think the, the things is related to manufacture. Uh, and McKenzie did a study showing that the manufacture sector actually store more data than any other sector. Uh, and in, even in 2010, it already store like close to two exabyte of data. And, uh, and Given so much data, there's opportunity for an analyze it and to get the, the, the business value. And what one can get is you can try to increase business value by uh, lower down the schedule, unscheduled downtime, uh, reduce man, uh, maintenance costs, uh, improve the overall equipment efficiency, or uh, improve the return on investment. Uh, so we have worked with three uh, IC manufacturing company in Taiwan. And what they, they want essentially try to find a way to improve overall if, uh, equipment efficiency. And for a specific uh, IC company we work with, uh, they have tried to do uh, several of things here, but mostly manually through Excel spreadsheet or through certain uh, manual inspection. And what they like to do is to able to automate them or 
a little semi-auto made the, the process uh, to get all this thing uh, resolved or to have a solution for this. Okay, and to do that, uh, we came up or we worked with them to develop a few of the analytic solutions, including anomaly detection and co uh, root cause analysis, predictive maintenance, uh, and optimize the, the scheduling or job page. Uh, uh, I will not get into the detail here. Uh, I just show you the, the achievement. So after working with them, after uh, we, we kind of collect hundreds of log information, or log from hundreds of equipment. Uh, keep in mind, each equipment has many, many log, many controller, many sensors generated. So it's not just hundreds of them, but if you count all of this, it's thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of them. And then we process and extract information from billions of logs and also other uh, uh, data set. And by extracting, combined, analyzing this, uh, we, we, we uh, generate uh, some or a prediction and analysis uh, and build a certain model for, for prediction. And we validate those model and, and the result, and it can achieve about 90% accuracy. And this is compared to they already doing manually through some other thing, and we compare the result. And the accuracy is about 90%. And this is even more important because the way they are doing now, they cannot do anything real-time response. And with uh, applying the big data analytics using the, the swimming technology like STORM, uh, we are able to have a real-time response and help them. Okay, two more minutes. Uh, to do uh, inside delivery and also to have a fast response. For example, in the pipeline or manufacturing, delay of one minute or two minutes may cause a lot because if something is wrong in high-tech manufacturing is wrong, if you don't detect it, whatever in the next summit, whatever product you are generating is, is going to be defected, is useless. And, and this, uh, they, they are very appreciative that we can help them to uh, achieve this, okay? Uh, I don't have time to go through this, this is bonus. We also apply in the uh, uh, healthcare. So in summary, uh, uh, big data, apparent big data analytics solution uh, to improve the operational efficiency has caught every business executive's attention. And the problem is how to help them or enable them to be able to apply this more efficiently or more effectively. And that's why we, uh, in Taiwan, we built a, a, a BITSO, a big data analytic platform. Uh, for OpenStack, which has emerged as a leading technology for building the cloud computing platform and deploying cloud services. So we combined the two, we built a, a BITSO SE, uh, and we have shown a several big data analytic uh, success story in Taiwan. Uh, and all, I, I mean, we have explored OpenStack to deliver the, uh, the, the cloud-based analytic solution. And finally, uh, it's think big, think open, and of course, please think happy so. Thank you. Any, any question? Maybe time for one question. If not, okay. Thank you for coming again. Thank you.